Hi there folks and welcome to another episode of Michael's Backyard Marina. Well, this video is going to be all about buying a boat. So you've just been perusing on Facebook Marketplace, right? Or Craigslist or eBay or wherever. And you just bought a boat, sight unseen. And you made a deal because the deal was so good you locked it in. I did that very thing right now. And we're getting ready to go out this morning and pick up that boat. The boat's 90 miles away from me. That doesn't seem like a long distance, right? But one thing you got to keep in mind is a boat trailer gets dunked in the water a whole lot or even a little bit or once or twice a year. But the most neglected thing on a boat typically has been my, in my findings has been the wheel bearings. So I'm going to show you all the stuff and it's not just about wheel bearings guys. This is more than that. I'm going to show you all the stuff I do to prepare to go get a boat like that so I don't have buyer's remorse halfway home on the side of the road with trouble. Trouble from the law, trouble from the trailer, trouble from the boat, just any kind of trouble. So let's start off with some of the things that we're going to load up and I'm going to show you these things when we get it in the back of the vehicle, how I got it set up. So first thing you want to have is some tools. Make sure you got tools. You got to have tools. Because uh, you don't get your man card punched if you don't have tools with you. You go to pick up something like this, you don't have one tool in the boat, throw your man card in the, in the shredder, and just quit doing man stuff, all right? Now, I know i got some lady viewers out there. This goes for you, too. You can put your lady card in the shredder if you don't do the things I'm telling you to do, or take your chances, right? So tools, I, the tools I take is I got a, a regular craftsman set. We'll go over that. I've got, I'm going to take an impact. I'm going to take two impacts actually. I'm going to take, so impact. Don't need it. Don't have it. It's okay to go manual. Okay. It's all right to be manual on this. I'm going to take some magnetic trailer lights. You can pick these up at Harbor Freight for about 35 bucks. They come with a four, a four plug, flat four plug in for your, the hookup to your standard trailer stuff. And they're magnetic and they're LED and you can drag them all the way back to the back of your trailer and plug it in. Because I don't think I bought but one boat in the history of me buying boats that all the trailer lights worked or were functional or the wiring was okay. Well, if you take your own lights and you put your magnetic things on it, it's you're going to be safe and this is about safety yes in the daytime you could probably get away with dragging it home but i don't recommend it so magnetic lights be prepared now i know you guys don't do this type of thing every day but it's just a nice some of these things are just nice to have because when you do have them man does it pay off because i've been out picking up a boat late at night or actually it was daylight ran into some trouble by the time i was halfway home it was dark out and i had no tail lights I took a bunch of back roads and made sure there was nobody ever behind me. But that's it's so much nicer just to stay on the main roads and have, have your stuff together, okay? Magnet lights. Okay, next thing. Wheel bearings. Now, I'm going to tell you right here now, you're not going to have the right wheel bearings with you. Now, I have a couple wheel bearings kits that I keep on hand here just, just for my own sake because I do have enough different trailers. And I do like the fact that I can just go out there and if I start to service one and I realize it's gotten some water in it, I need to replace them. I have them on hand. And then the next time, you know, I get out buying stuff, I'll buy a replacement set. That way I don't lose a lot of time in the middle of a project. And so, but you may not have wheel bearings, right? Take you some grease and those tools that I'm talking about, some pliers, some needle nose pliers, screwdrivers, you know, your socket set. So you, and a floor jack. Floor jack. Just a small one. It's just enough to get underneath the axle and jack the wheel up and get that wheel off and that bearing off if you need to. And then if you're taking wheel, if you got to, you know, don't have wheel bearings, take your wheel bearing grease with you. Because chances are you're going to jack this thing up. And that's what I'm going to do in this video. We're going to jack it up. I'm going to spin the wheels. If the wheel sounds quiet, you're probably 99% okay. You might have enough grease in there, enough lube in there to get you home. If you pick that wheel up and you hear this growling sound, and I ain't kidding you, nine out of 10 times, that's 90% to you and me, 
90% of the time, you're gonna hear that growling sound because those wheel bearings were neglected. By the time somebody decided to get rid of a boat, they probably stopped caring for a boat a long time ago. Much like a divorce. <laughs> okay. Uh, but that way, if you take some grease with you, at least you could pop that hub off and that outer bearing off and you can smash some grease in these old nasty bearings. My heater just kicked on. But uh, you can, and take some, take some brake cleaner with you because that way you can actually flush it out. You know, take two or three cans because this stuff, you know, it works really good, but you're going to be getting rid of some nasty old grease. Take you a box of rags. So you got grease, you got rags. Take some rags with you. Take you a container or a little tray or something that you can spray and clean things up in. So tray. So this is getting pretty detailed, right? We're getting involved, but you know, part of the fun of, of going and getting a new boat is getting it home successfully and safely. And if you have a lot of the right stuff with you, you might be able to do some stuff, you know, on the way home that you don't have to worry about again for a little while and just go out and start enjoying things. Uh, air pump. Let's go uh, air pump. Now, my J, my JF Eguo, yeah, J, JW Eguo, something like that. I'll show it to you. Uh, air pump. It's handy to take because it's from, it can uh, pump your tires up because chances are the tires are going to be low. Most trailer tires run anywhere from 40 to 60 pounds of PSI, and you're going to get a trailer tire that has 30 or 20 in it. And it looks like it's got enough air, but it will blow out on you depending on its age. So I've got one that you plug in. You hook it on the tire, you can turn it, set the pressure, turn it on and walk away. Nice thing about the walking away part is it will shut off when it hits its pressure you preset it at, but you don't have to be near that tire when it blows or if it blows. So, uh, air pump, very important. Uh, trailer hitch balls. You got two inch and you got inch and seven eighths, which most boat trailers have. Very rarely are you gonna, if you're going to get a boat with your regular towing vehicle that has a two and five sixteenths ball on it, you might you might have overworked your vehicle, so I wouldn't recommend it. But two inch inch seven inch ball, I have both. I carry just in case because this boat I'm getting ready to go get does have an inch and seven eighths ball on it, and so I've already loaded that into the thing. I've got my two inch in the back just in case somebody makes a mistake. The other thing I'm going to take overkill. I got another two inch coupler. I'm going to take that and the bolts, my drill and my drill set because in case that coupler is complete piece of crap and you don't trust it, we're gonna go ahead and take the old one off because I got tools with me, take the old one off, possibly redrill some holes, bolt a new one on, and then I got a safe coupler. But there's all these things you can do. You can, you can risk it or you, can, or you can do it right. It's your choice, always your choice. Okay, what else are we missing here? Do you happen to have a spare tire? Now, if you have, like me, I've got two spare tires I'll take with me. I'll take a, uh, uh, like basically a 13 inch or a 12 inch tire, it doesn't matter because if it's too small, that's fine. It's better than no tire, right? It'll get you somewhere besides the side of the road. Uh, four hole pattern, five hole pattern, pretty standard in trailer world. So if you got a four hole pattern one and you got a five hole pattern one, you're going to cover 99% of, nope, say 92% of the trailers out there that you're going to go get that a boat will be sitting on. Unless it's some homemade thing that somebody took apart a 1952 camper and made a trailer, a boat trailer out of it, then, then you're just SOL. Uh, what else do we got here? Uh, I think I covered most all of it. Don't forget to have your phone with you, with your GPS and, and mount it to a window or your dash or something so you don't have to be fumbling with it and you can be safe while you're driving. And then also what I do, when I'm, when I'm buying something off Facebook, like I did yesterday, last yesterday, made a deal with a person, don't go, is it still available? Assume it is. I jump in and I, I, when I go to make a deal, I got jump in and say, Hey, I got cash in hand. I'm going to give you your asking price because if it's a good deal, just give the people their asking price. I have negotiated down many, many times, but when it's one of those deals that you know, you're getting it for about, I don't know, let's just say seven, eight, nine hundred dollars to a thousand dollars cheaper than you should be getting it for. Just take it, take it at face value and you know, buy it. But I put in there, Hey, Got cash in hand, when's a good time to pick it up? That's a straight up offer. And then if you, a lot of times on Facebook or those places, they'll tell you about where they're at. And then also put in there, I live about an hour and a half away from where you're at. Uh, let me know what time, it's a good time to pick it up. And I'll also let you know 
when I'm a half hour away. So let the buyer, let the seller know that you're serious and then you're not some just Joe, some Joe Schmoes trying to scam them because uh, there's tons of scams out there and it's absolutely driving me nuts. All those guys out there that are scamming things should be just put in one big room and uh, let's just leave them there because come on people, what happened to integrity? What happened to ethics? All right. Let's go back to, uh, I think I covered a lot of stuff here. I'm going to show you my stuff, what I'm taking with me uh, to prepare myself to have the, the best trip. Dress appropriately. I got my banana Hawaiian shirt on today. So this is bananas, right? And uh, so this boat I'm going to pick up, I'll share later in the video. Keep watching. Uh, it's one I've been wanting. I got rid of my 1969 Sea Nymph, which I use for testing outboards. And I sold that with the, with the uh, outboard on it. And I've been looking for like a 14 foot extra wide John boat uh, to put these outboards on, to take them to the lake, to test them and to be safe with them. Now that 14 foot uh, sea nymph I had was a, a, a V hull on the front and it was, you know, not as stable as you'd like it to be, but if you're careful, it's fine. It, it you know, held my son and I just fine, but it would be nice to have something a little more stable, a little more, you know, just a little more. And I found it, and I'll show you what that is later. All right. Can you think of anything else? We'll ch I'll chirp in some more stuff. So this is, this is your, you guys might think I'm nuts, but, you know, my wife's with me in the car. She goes with me on these trips. Uh, she, she likes to get out of the house and do these things. And uh, the, what you can do to keep your hobby happy, keep your wife happy, right? And, you know, make it so that the trip doesn't inconvenience her. Now, I always plan to go and we'll catch breakfast somewhere, depending on, like we're leaving early this morning. Uh, the sun's just, the sun isn't up yet. The sun ain't coming up today. It's coming up, but it's gonna be covered by clouds. But we're gonna be stopping somewhere and grabbing us a little breakfast. And by the time we're heading home, it's gonna be lunchtime. I've already picked out the place where we're gonna eat lunch and uh, have that all planned out. So. You can, you can tell her what's going on. She it doesn't have to be a big mystery or inconvenience to her. And uh, plus, you know, that way you get, to be, you get some, you know, one-on-one. -on -one. Let's just say inside of a vehicle, you're pretty much a captive audience. So we get some together time because I spend a lot of time in my shop and a lot of time in my basement editing videos and work full time besides that. So it's, uh, you know, you got you to gotta schedule some time with the, you know, with your special someone in your life. All right. Let's, let's take a look at what I got in the back of the Jeep and uh, we're gonna go from there. All right, we got everything loaded up in here, ready to go. I tested my trailer lights. I'm gonna show you these real quick. Pretty simple setup. It's got your four flat with a long lead on it. It's got your two magnetic trailer lights here that you can stick onto your, you know, trailer. I don't have a good flat surface there, but you can stick them on your trailer and you have nice bright LED trailer lights for your ride home. The other thing, don't forget, go ahead and have a bill of sale made out. A bill of sale will, will improve the transaction quickness, right? Um, also, ratchet straps. Now these are some Strapano ratchet straps that have, they're self-retracting and they work really good because the boat may not be strapped down to the trailer and you need to make sure it's strapped down to the trailer. So take you a handful of ratchet straps with you as well. Also, I got a, one of those uh, moving blankets you buy from Harbor Freighter or big box stores. Uh, those are nice for if you're stuck somewhere and you're having to work on the ground, you can actually throw that down on the ground. You can be comfortable while you're doing this, you know, uncomfortable work. And uh, depending on whether it's nasty out, rainy out, muddy out, you got something to, you know, keep yourself somewhat presentable, you know, because you, you're getting ready to go eat after you pick this up with your wife. You kind of keep yourself clean, right? Okay. Uh, what else we got? Zip ties. Zip ties are come in handy. So when you put these trailer lights on, you can put a couple zip ties to kind of, you know, for some wire management. Uh, take you. Whoop. Take you some bungee cords. They might be coming in handy for you as well. You know, try to be a good boy scout and prepare, prepare. 
All right. We're loaded up here, about ready to go. Got my paperwork. All I need is a ballpoint pen, sign paperwork with. And uh, we got our grease. We got my brake cleaner. I got a tray over here. I got one spare tire. You know, it's a four, it's a four bolt. That'll cover 50% of the needs out there. Yeah, it may not be for this one, but we uh, there's big box stores between here and there that I can buy a tire if I had to. What else we got? You got all my impact tools, drills, bolts for the coupler. We're ready to go. So let's get on the road. Let's get this transaction completed so we can start having some fun with another boat. All righty, folks, we completed the transaction on the boat. I've handed the man the cash and hooked it up to the trailer and I, I left the parking. We were in a private parking lot, church parking lot, so it was where we met. So I got out of there. I'm now in a bigger, big box store parking lot, let's call it. And I noticed when I went down the road, just a little short ways, this was flopping. And this is a metal pipe that broke, which had a piece of rebar that also was a support mechanism. Uh, I think I'm going to have to, I got zip ties here. I probably could use ratchet straps, but we're going to, we're going to see if we can just zip tie this thing back together. Uh, this board here seems to be pretty sturdy by design. And I think I can get a couple zip ties around it. Whoa, that's how, that's how broken it was. Wow, it's full of. Oh my gosh, it's terrible. Let's just say it's it's barely there right now. That was amazing. It went as far as it did without falling. But the lights do work. Believe it or not. I think we can make this uh make this work. I think we'll put a few more zip ties on that and we'll be, we'll just call that, that'll get us home. We got about 90 miles to home from here. Good news is I can see this out of my driver's side rear view mirror. I'm just gonna put, if four is good, eight's gonna be better, right? This board seems to be fairly well attached. That should stay, I think. We'll give it a whirl. All right, that's problem number one. I've got to get a jacket on. It's only about 36 degrees out here with a little bit of breeze, a little bit of mist. It's a little bit of a mess out here. Uh, we're going to go ahead and jack this tire up, or wheel up, spin it, see how it sounds. We're going to go ahead and stick this little jack here right underneath the rear axle, or the only axle, <laughs> rear axle. Tires seem a little soft. Don't seem too dry rotted. Don't sound too bad. They definitely probably could use some grease, but they're not so bad that it's going to blow out or, you know, blow out a bearing on me. Now the tires, they did sound a little squishy. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at the pressure here. Heard that. Tires are rated at 44 PSI. Now I got the JF Iguo. If you followed me for a minute and seen the review on this, you know I'm pretty tickled about this piece of equipment. It's not only is it a jump pack, it's also an ear pump. It works really well. I've been using it a lot. The nice thing is you turn it on. Oh, hit the on button. Where to go? Right there. You can set the pressure. I'll put it right at 44 pounds. The nice thing about this is I can hook this on. The tires look appear to have no dry rot. That's good. That's helpful. Let's see, it's saying it has about 10 pounds of pressure. And it can run that, stay away from it, so if it blows up, it don't hit you in the face. And 
And just like that, this tire's got 44 pounds of pressure in it, all done. I'm gonna take this around to the other side and we'll go ahead and top off that tire. And upon further inspection, this has a little extra wiggle here. It's out of adjustment. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop this bearing cap off and we're gonna look at the grease inside and maybe add a little bit to it. The other tire only had 13 and a half pounds of pressure in it. So now what we're gonna do is get right down here. This is why it's nice to bring a blanket like this or Then get right down here on the wet pavement and not get all wet and nasty. This is an old, you can just tell this is an old setup. Yeah, it don't look too rusty in here so far. There's no moisture in the cap, that's a good sign. But you can definitely tell it's out of adjustment and it's, and it's a little bit dry. So thank goodness I brought me some grease with me and some pliers. Now it should be able to take me uh, just a pair of needle nose pliers to get this cotter pinned out. Now I did pull this a very short distance to a big box store that would have potentially some, uh, you know, cotter pins and possibly some different things I may, may or may not need when it's all said and done. Oh yeah. I also brought myself some rubber gloves, you know. It's gonna keep my hands cleaner. So if I have to go back in the store. Boy, this trailer is, it's a homemade trailer. And somebody did the best job they could with it. Probably with the tools that they had. And uh, Let's just say it's got a lot of room for flexibility here. All right, the other pump, the other, see that cotter pin just broke. Yeah, there wasn't much strength left in that. I wasn't gonna be able to bend it back. Got your handy dandy pair of channel locks here, little mini channel locks so we can get a hold of that nut and spin it right off of there. Boy, what kind of, that's some thick grease on here. That's some sticky grease. Yeah, these bearings are definitely shot. But, if I put some fresh grease on them, they'll get me home. I'm going to go ahead and pull this one on off. Well, this was a... I wonder what this was off of. It has a brake drum in a little wheel cylinder you can tell it's never had brakes on it on the trailer but this is a this is a front end this axle is a front end off of a car boy what this was this was put together i'm gonna see if i can pop this seal out and reuse it now i've got one of these wheel seal pullers that'll get you in here behind the seal because you have the tire still hooked to it it's actually kind of handy because it'll give you some leverage. And see if I can just gently massage that seal out. Just like that. And this seal looks like it's it's shot. It, uh, it will block the rain out of it. Let's just say that. It won't keep water out, but it will block the rain out of it. I think the problem is the wheel ran a little wobbly for too long and just just took it right out. Oh, these bearings are, ooh. Wow. Okay, the cage is very rough. We're gonna go ahead and see if we can just, you know, patch this back together. These bearings are, They don't have moisture in it right now, but there was moisture at some point in time in the past. So we're gonna go ahead and clean this, all this old grease off as much as we can. And if you use a pan like this, tip it up so you can take advantage of what's puddling here. And these are some made in USA bearings. Whatever vehicle this came off of, because this isn't your standard trailer axle. 
That's for sure. <laughs> these bearings are these bearings are about ready to fall out of the cage actually bad part is since this isn't a standard trailer axle I'm not going to be able to stop anywhere and get a uh, a bearing kit for it most likely unless I can find that you know that specific size I think it is it's kind of a standard See a brake cream like that, this just makes me a temporary solvent tank, which works really good. That's pretty clean. The thing I don't have is an air hose. Uh-oh. Bearing just flew out of there. Well, that is some of the thickest grease I've ever seen in my life. My God. This is terrible, terrible. Let's see if I can thin it up a little bit here. I'm not trying to get it 100% cleaned out, but I just want to get it so the, the new grease can do something against this old race. Now we got this about as clean as it's going to get for what it is. I'm not trying to make it perfect, that's for darn sure, because there's no way they can. These bearings are practically falling apart. The cage is worn thin like one of the worst cases you could have here we're gonna go ahead and see if we can't push some grease up this seals really just for looks at this point honestly it's not doing anything but I'm gonna keep some road grime out that's about it and get it to go back in there we go All right, let's stick her back on here. Oh, that's some stringy grease. Okay, we got to go back inside and get a new cotter pen for this. I'm going to go ahead and pull the other side apart. I won't waste your time with that one. Um, if I got some things to show you, I'll start the camera up and show you. But uh, we got to get a cotter pen on this, put the cap on, and I think we're ready to go. This, this is uh, we got rid of a lot of the play, and it's about as tight as it, and tight and slash loose as I can keep her. And we'll just run her from there and see what happens. But. After seeing the condition of this side, I definitely need to check the other side. All right, I had to tune you guys back in for this little bit here. Uh, the bearings literally fell out of the cage. Once I got all the grease out of it, flushed out of it, they're, they're just amazing, right? Wow. So this is, uh, I'm glad I brought all the stuff I brought with me. You know, a lot of times you bring this stuff with you, hoping you don't need it, but I'm going to need my dexterity here. But yeah, these bearings, they're pretty rough. I mean, they're, they've lost, <laughs> they've got some pitting on them. There's some wear, but being this is some kind of modified car, trailer, hub, I mean, this, this literally came off of some kind of something else. It's not your standard trailer stuff. So it's going to be some kind of oddball something or another. So we're going to literally use the grease to put her back together. So I'm going to put a little bit of grease back in all this and start inserting bearings. And these bearings are tapered a specific direction as well. So you got to make sure you put them in the right way. Otherwise, you'll go from bad to worse real quick hey another train now I wanted to get you guys in here tight on this this looks like this has been ground on to make it smaller 
to fit the bearing. That's not marks that the bearing would leave. Uh, bearings would leave a nice smooth ring. That's been ground on with like a disc sander or grinder to get that thing to uh, down to fit the bearing that this wheel currently has on it. So this is this is a little bit of a hot mess for sure, but I think we got it back together. We got the bearing, little bearing put back together. We're getting ready to put the wheel back on. All right, let's see if we can sneak this second wheel back into place. Alrighty, we got it all back together. All I gotta do is run back in the store, get a couple of cotter pins. We'll put the cotter pins back in, put the caps back on, put a couple of my tools away, and I think we're ready to see if this thing will make it home. Uh, gotta get the safety chain uh, sorted out here. It's One of them's kinda locked up. I can't get it unhooked so I can hook it. We're gonna go in and get some PB Blaster to put on that. And then we'll put a few of these things away. We'll hit the highway. It's been, uh, it's a dreary day out. I mean, it's. It's been this kind of light out all day. No, I mean, it's full of clouds, no sunshine. And uh, I think we're ready to roll. Hey, hit the flashers in there. Let's see if these flashers work. Still good. All right. There's the one pipe over here fell off. It was like this, and when I touched it, it went to the ground. So I got it zip tied back to that. So hopefully it'll get us home. All right. Uh, we'll check back in if we break down. Hopefully I won't have to talk back to you until we get back at the house and then we'll kind of give this little boat here a once over and kind of show you what's going on with it. Well, we made it home. What you hear running in the background is my power washer because this boat is black on the outside, but you can't tell that right now because of the, the fact that we had to go down about eight miles of dirt road and I'll tell you why in a little bit. Well, one of the things that came along with this John boat was uh, a Chrysler, 25 horse Chrysler. No idea what year, but that'll probably be in a future video. And another one looks like about a mid 80s, 25 horse Johnson short shaft came along with it. A couple of seats and uh, that's about it. Didn't come with much else. It did have papers for the boat and the trailer, but I got to show you this trailer. All right, folks, well, we got our power washed off and we've got, I got a story to tell you about the trailer. The trailer is the absolute worst trailer I've ever pulled in my life. Uh, well, and you know, back in the parking lot, you saw me getting the wheel bearing sorted out. They felt the cages fell apart or the bearings fell out of the cages, got it back together, got it. I got it home. We went, we went, we went around a hundred miles. By the time I was heading home, I had 80 mile, 89 miles to home, but we drove around town there a little bit. Plus I wanted to kind of make sure things settled in with my ratchet straps, but, and it did. Uh, nothing got away from me, but the absolute worst trailer I've ever pulled in my life. This thing is made out of, I ain't kidding you, it's probably inch and a quarter tubing, round tubing. And it's front to rear round tubing and round tubing. And it's, it's like pulling a little floppy trailer around. This thing, it wasn't, you know, fishtailing, is one thing, you can kind of control fishtail a little bit by how you load your trailer. This one, we had the 25 horse right over the axle and the other 25 horse halfway between the front of the boat and the axle. The thing's got about 100 pounds of tongue weight, but my, my God, this thing, like I said, it was just, you look behind you, you get up, you get up about 60 miles an hour and it starts stirring this, you gotta slow down. And you could run about 55 miles an hour. So we drove home 55 miles an hour, took back roads. And that's how we ended up on eight miles of, this is the, I don't know what you want to call this type of road. It was a dirt road, but it's been raining and misty all day. And it's just saturated on top and it's just coated everything on the outside. But, uh, well, we made it, we made it home. That's the big thing. I'm going to get this tray, this boat. I'm trying to think about what I want to do here. 
So part of me says, leave it on this trailer for the winter. Other part of me says, flip it upside down on some saw horses for the winter. So I'm kind of, I'm kind of wondering what I need to do there. What I also want to do is power wash the inside out and get it clean before I flip it over. We are going to have to put a new transom board back here. I can see the one that's in here has got a little crack in it. It's old. It's a, this is supposedly, for, according to the paperwork, an old Polar Craft, like a 19, I think it was an 83 Polar Craft trailer or boat. But uh, it is a 16 foot. It is extra wide. It's at least five foot across, if not more. I'd say closer to, yeah, it's about five foot, five and a half foot across. So this is going to be, and the reason I picked this boat up is it's going to be my new test boat. You know, I got rid of the 69 Sea Nymph. This is going to be my new test boat that I throw every outboard I ever come across on to try it out, including Frankenstein. If you guys don't know what Frankenstein is, you're going to have to do a search on my channel for Frankenstein. Uh, I finally, this boat will finally be big enough. It's a short shaft boat though, and Frankenstein's a long shaft, but that's okay. We can still hang it on the back here and just see what it does. It's not gonna hurt anything. It's not like it's gonna go a thousand miles an hour. But uh, overall, the boat's in pretty good shape. Uh, somebody painted the inside, somebody pray, sprayed gray on the, or black on the outside, gray on the inside. I mean, it's somebody, the seats are look pretty original as far as that original green. It'd be really cool if the whole boat was still that original green, whether it was patinaed out or whatever it might be. but. I don't know. It's got three gussets back there on the transom for the for the, the the motors to handle that stuff. So I'm pretty happy about that. But I got to get these Johnson. So I paid. I didn't pay that much for this whole thing. Uh, very reasonable price. And I knew there were motors in the back outboards. I didn't know what they were. When I get there and I see that the one's a 25 horse Johnson and a 25 horse Chrysler, and he said the 25 horse Johnson ran. I'm like, okay. Uh, worst case scenario, that gearbox that I just got on this Johnson here will fit on my other Johnson, if nothing else. But we're going to get this guy running. Why not? We'll see what it's got. It's just another one to add to the to the whole fleet and see if we can get him running. All right, let me show you some of the stuff on this trailer that just it, it will absolutely blow your mind. Now, I know the lighting conditions aren't the best out here right now. But yeah, you can see this diameter of this tubing. It's like this. It's small. And that's what's supporting pretty much the whole boat on either side. And it comes together, and there's a tube that runs down the middle to the axle. <coughs> and as we saw, these axles, this axle is something from a car front end or something. Um, it's not right. <laughs> the fact that this actually went as far as it did and lasted as long as it did surprised me. But in some of the things that could attribute to the way this thing is running is the fact that whoever assembled this thing Put the springs on backwards. They've got the shackle in the front. Shackle's supposed to be in the back. And that might have been contributing to why that thing flexed and did what it did. Uh, maybe it did, maybe it didn't. But, you know, when you move this thing around, you can see this thing just working. <laughs> it shouldn't be doing that. Uh, it should be working, but it should be working back there. The other, the other thing that was interesting to see is how this piece of pipe, I mean, it looked like... I don't know how they cut this pipe off. It looks like with a torch at some point. All this was cut with a torch. Not really ground off, smoothed off, but the, t the tail lights worked all the way home. Don't know how, but they did. And this is a piece of pipe that's welded down there. And then it's got another rebar. Looks like half inch or five eighths. Actually, that's five eighths rebar going down to the frame to, to stabilize this thing. Well, that was good for this side. <laughs> I'm going to pan you up a little bit. And... Right over, about right there, I'd say there, is where the other one should be. It broke off. You know, you, in the parking lot, you saw me zip tying it back up and kind of holding it in place. It broke off. It's still over there. It's facing the wrong way, and it still works. I couldn't believe it. It still works. All right. Well, it's time for me to get these outboards out of the boat uh, and then decide what I'm going to do. Now, you guys are going to think I'm crazy. And maybe a little bit of crazy goes a long way with me, and that's okay. But uh, doing that work out in the parking lot, doing the wheel bearings, you know, let's just call it rescuing that little trailer in that boat. A trailer, I rescued it, but it's not salvageable. The axle is toast. Those springs are not for designed for boat trailer use or trailer use are too long and too bouncy. Uh, 
the the things it does have i got two good wheels and tires and i got a trailer tongue jack and the rest of it is junk it's junk but that's okay i got i got things to do with it but what did we use today you know I, we started off the day with this uh and it's this is uh i started this morning off at like 6 30 it's 5 14 in the evening and i'm back home doing this and i spent the whole time now i did take my wife out to dinner and i did take her out to a couple of places to see some plants at the plant store you know but and that's that's awesome so of all the stuff we you that i put here plus some other stuff i pointed out what did we use we used the air pump because the tires were at 10 pounds and 13 pounds and they're supposed to be at 44 blew up the air pump blew them up just fine tools yeah we used tools we didn't use the impact uh we used the inch and seven eighths ball we didn't have to use the magnetic light wheel bearings now i didn't have the right size i took wheel bearings with me i didn't have to use them floor jack yep i used the floor jack grease lots of grease i used rags tons and tons of rags and the, the tray i used the tray and i used uh three cans of brake cleaner to clean stuff up brake cleaner is handy because even when you go to clean your rubber gloves off or anything you can spray a little brake cleaner on a on a one of those rags and you can just use it for cleaning and wiping down stuff and cleaning up your tools it's very handy now what i did do is i took all those rags that you know it's tray when i sprayed all that stuff up i soaked it all up in my burn in my uh with my rags put those in a plastic bag and tied it shut and then i'll use that to you know get my fire going great fire starter stuff right um but yeah so the only thing we didn't use is our impact the magnetic lights we didn't need to use because the lights worked and the wheel bearings i didn't have to use because those wheel bearings that are in those wheels are not of the trailer world let's put it that way but we made it home and that's the important part now the person that built that trailer now i'm a i spent my first 15 years of my life down in the south and then ended up uh getting transplanted to iowa and i've been here ever since but down south and the folks that are down south and in, in, in different areas will understand what i'm getting ready to say but that trailer was built out of stuff i ain't kidding you that was on the farm scrap pile somewhere it's a home-built trailer through and through no doubt and down south you somebody would look at that and and see the effort somebody put into it and just look at that and go well bless they heart just bless their pea picking little heart and you guys down south well, everybody down south will know what that means but anyway they tried they tried really hard and it got the boat home now the guy i bought it from says he used to trailer that thing back and forth and i said how's this thing trailer i said it looks like it's not balanced quite right and i said how when you have a 25 horse or a 30 horse or that boat's i think rated up to a 40 horse boat hanging on the back of that boat and that trailer i said that looks like you don't have any tongue weight and it won't it won't pull right he goes and he goes well that's why i put one of these motors up front and it did help but that trailer that boat will not leave this yard on that trailer ever again i guarantee you that it will i've got several other trailers that i've got uh that i've junked boats out on that that uh that that boat will go on to and be proper you guys seen what i do i do it proper proper as i can anyway all right anything else we got going on so you know it was it was i don't know you guys think i'm crazy but i had fun doing that out in the parking lot and it was funny because it was i was out parked in the parking lot way away from the front entrance and way away from everybody in, in the home depot parking lot because at least there i knew i could get some grease i could get some cotter pins and if i was tools i didn't have or straps or anything i needed i could have probably you know got myself fixed up there a little bit and i went back in all i needed was two cotter pins and a little can of pb blaster that's all i got that's all i had to buy to get me home but it's funny i was out there for golly an hour hour and a half messing around with those trailer wheels and tires or trailer wheels and bearings and uh when i went back in to get the cotter pins and a guy goes hey can i help you and i'm like yeah i'm looking for cotter pins you know i was walking up down the alley he goes oh there should be right here we got them 
And he goes, are you that guy out there messing with that boat trailer in the parking lot? I'm like, yep, that's me. And it's kind of funny because he was on the far end of the store away from where I was at. But the word had already gotten around the store, I believe, that there's some fool out there in the parking lot working on a boat trailer in December. It wasn't warm out. It was like 40 degrees. Well, then it, and it's, but it felt like 39 because we've got this wet drizzle and overcast. Luckily, it wasn't very windy all day today. All day today. So anyway, had a good time. Got it here. We got a new test boat. That's going to be awesome. Future videos coming up in that. Probably not till closer to spring because I got plenty of outboard work to do indoors. But we got to get that one set up so that it doesn't fill up with water, doesn't freeze, doesn't start making, you know, causing me rivet leaking problem. So we got to take care of that one uh, between tonight and tomorrow. That's why I'm thinking about flipping it upside down for the winter uh, on some sawhorses. But I don't know. And I'm probably going to repaint it because the black boat ain't going to do it for me. And I started power washing and some of the paint started coming off anyway. We're just going to have to, you know, do something and clean it up and fix the transom a little bit and get it ready. It ain't going to be a pretty boat. It's going to be a test boat. It's going to be something I just hook anything I got on the back and let's just see how the, how the outboard performs. I'm not worried about how the boat performs. The boat's going to float because it's wide and long. It's going to draft about three inches of water probably. <laughs> so, all right. Thank you guys for coming along with me on this. And I appreciate your viewership and I appreciate you liking and subscribing. Uh, thanks for always commenting. There's several of you that like the drone footage at the end. Uh, next summer, uh, my son and I are going to try to get as much drone footage as we can. Uh, every time we go out, we get drone footage so, uh, so I can have some fresh stuff for you here and there. Some of it's going to be repeat. Some of it's going to be some new stuff you haven't seen before yet. And uh, keep watching. Keep subscribing. Keep sharing with your buddies. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up. And this is Mike saying, if it ain't broke, fix it till it is. And we'll see you on the next video coming up real soon. Thank you and goodbye. <laughs>